Hi, everybody. It is 6.30 on Tuesday morning. I have a big mouse experiment today. So Alyssa is going to be doing lab with you today. I wanted to go over a couple things like I would normally do at the beginning of class so you understand what's going on and uh, know some important information. So first of all, the lab that you're doing today is for your first lab report. It's due next Tuesday, uh, let's say before midnight. April, Alyssa and I decided because this is physiology summer camp at super fast speed, results in discussion only. Uh, I don't want to read 10 introductions that all say the same thing in 10 materials and methods that are cut and pasted from the lab procedure. We don't need to do that for the purposes of this lab. 15 points for the results, 15 points for the discussion, 30 points total for the lab report. That's 10% of your overall grade. This is important. I told you at the beginning, I give out 24, 48 hour extensions like candy. If you need more time, send me an email. Send me an email, preferably before class time on Tuesday, okay? Let me know that you need an extra day, an extra two days, it will be no problem. Here's the catch. I am going out of town this weekend. Uh, Friday to Monday, I'm gonna be at my sister's house. I really haven't had a weekend off since January, so this is kind of a big deal for me. So I'm not bringing my computer. I will have my phone and email on my phone, but I'm not gonna bring my computer. If you email me asking for an extension, even if you don't hear back from me, assume you have it, okay? It'll be fine. Um, if you have a question, email me. I will get back to you as soon as you can. If you have a question and I don't get back to you soon enough and you need an extra day to finish up, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay. So this is the board in our lab. Um, today, the lab is titled Blood Glucose. However, that's a little bit of a misnomer. The purpose of today's lab is to use a standard curve to quantify an unknown. And the unknown we're working with is blood glucose concentration. Okay, so in real life, if you needed to know someone's blood glucose, you would not make a standard curve and use a spectrophotometer. You would prick their finger and put it on a test strip and put it in a glucometer and you'd have a reading in five seconds. So it's a little bit contrived. The point here is to learn how to use a standard curve. I realize that you all have been online for a year and you may not know what a standard curve is. So I want to explain it since that's kind of the point of this lab. So the idea of a standard curve is to use a series of known concentrations, measure them, and that way you can figure out the concentration of an unknown. And the thing you're going to be using to do this is called a spec. You, uh, each group is going to have one, and there are directions in Blackboard, very detailed for how to use it. It's really simple. Follow the directions step by step. So let's talk about what a spec is first. So you have a test tube, and you put it into the spec, and you have a laser that goes through at a certain wavelength. That's important. Okay, over here, I need to know what nanometers you used. You're going to have to set the spec to the right number of nanometers. If you have plain old water, hopefully, uh, all of the light from the laser will go straight through, okay? So if we have plain water, all of the laser, all of the light is going to be transmitted and none of it will be absorbed. We may have other things, okay? So this is the mouse buffer that we use a ton in my lab, it's, it's not quite clear. It's got some uh, serum albumin and some antibiotic in it. And so when it passes, when the laser passes through, not all of the light is going to make it through to the other side. Some of it is going to be absorbed by the opaque of the liquid and a smaller portion, not 100% of the light from the laser is going to make it all the way through. And the spec measures exactly how much of the light is transmitted all the way through and how much is absorbed by the sample. Where this nanometers come in, okay, if you remember back to some class, um, 
colors are at different wavelengths, okay? So if you're looking at different nanometers, things that are colored are going to have different readings for absorbance, okay? So today, everything you do is going to be uh, clear or opaque clear, so we don't need to worry about color in the samples very much. Okay, so how to make a standard curve. Let's imagine that we're looking at concentration of something. Let's say it's protein and I'm using my mouse buffer here. Okay, so I've got protein, I've got mouse buffer with different concentrations of protein in it. Maybe we've got one, two, three, four, five grams per liter. So I'm going to take a sample of each of those concentrations, put them in an individual test tube, put them in the spec, let the laser go through and see how much light makes it to the other side or how much is absorbed. So let's say that at one gram per liter, I have some amount of absorption. And then at three grams per liter, I have some amount of absorption. And at five grams per liter, I have some amount of absorption. Okay, so if I were to make a trend line or a line of best fit, it would go through something like that. And I could do a couple things here. I could use a by hand math equation, like you'll see in your uh, lab information today. And let's say that you put your unknown sample, so you don't know the concentration in this case, you're putting an unknown sample into the spec and you get an absorption of 0.5. What information does that give you? If we extend that line over, we would find where it hits our trend line, and then we would look down, and, you know, if our lines were all straight and we were using linear equations, uh, possibly we could estimate the concentration of our unknown sample to be 4 grams per liter. If we had an absorbance of 0.5, uh, OP stands for uh, optical density. Another way to write that is the absorbance, how much of the laser's light is being absorbed at a certain number of nanometers. If you have questions about this, ask Alyssa in class. Uh, one last thing, you guys are going to be using uh, Excel to make a graph for your lab reports. It's really important that concentration is on the x-axis. Okay. This is kind of a general thing for science. This is a stupid thing that I used to use with middle schoolers and high schoolers. Okay, I choose the independent variable. I choose the independent variable and it goes on the x-axis. 99% of the time that's going to be true. Here, we are saying that concentration is causing a change in absorbs abs absorption. Sorry. So if concentration is driving the change in absorbance, that means concentration is the independent variable. Independent variable, I control it, it goes on the x-axis. Okay, so we want concentration on the x-axis. All right, I've got one more thing I want to show you, but I need to set some things up. Uh, I'll have another video for you in just a moment.